All right, hey guys. So I played in FLC 25 this past weekend. That is the Format Library uh, sponsored tournament. Um, I once again brought my Reasoning Gate deck, which is, of course, my favorite deck. Um, it is the second uh, online tournament I've played in. Uh, I did not do that great again, <laughs> uh, but I did better than last time though. So that's good. I went three and two, it's double elimination. Um, so I, th I just thought I'd do a, a debrief of how the tournament went, a recap, uh, talk about some of my thoughts. Shout out to uh, Pui, who also uh, picked up this deck recently and piloted it during the same tournament. Uh, she got top eight um, and potentially even could have got top four, but uh, she intentionally dropped. But shout out to her. Uh, really interesting hearing her thoughts on this deck and getting her feedback for how to play this deck against certain matchups. You know, she has a lot more experience than I do uh, playing in online uh, GOAT format tournaments. Um, so I went three and two. Uh, I'm going to keep taking this deck till I top, basically, <laughs> is my plan. Um, but it was a learning experience. Full disclosure, I made a ton of really atrocious, atrocious, atrocious misplays. Like, I'm almost too embarrassed to show the... Uh, <laughs> the the replays but um i'll keep myself accountable here and we'll go through them uh the, the tournament is hosted on like 9 a.m on a sunday which is you know i have to get up at like 8 45 or whatever which is you know three to four hours honestly earlier than i would normally get up on a sunday so i was half asleep here and i kind of decided to play in this tournament last last second but um you know, excuses are excuses. Uh, I made quite a few misplays, which I'll go over in, in the videos. But some of the misplays, like, I'm not even going to be able to explain them, honestly. Like, I, I don't even know why I did some things. But this is the deck that I took. Uh, this is a deck list that I took. Um, still playing the Serpent. I decided to get a little freaky with it and play Reckless Greed instead. I took out a Brain Control uh, from the main deck. Um, my thought process here was that Brain Control... Obviously can't use it going first. Uh, not that great against Chaos Turbo decks because they're playing a lot of cards face down. Reckless Greed, I, I know this is a very polarizing card. I don't love it myself, um, but the thought process here is the deck can plus really hard off of one card, you know, Dimension Fusion. Uh, you can get back Demok and Crane, uh, which can easily lead to, you know, pretty big pluses. Um, it is a plus one when you use it, right? You can control when you activate it. Um, basically, you're trying to dig deeper for a Dimension Fusion or a Chaos Monster if you need it. Um, and then even if you don't win uh, that turn, hopefully you've generated enough pluses and you have Sinister Serpent to come back to offset the, the issue of not getting your next two draws. Um, so overall, it actually won me one game and went neutral the other one. Um, so it didn't perform that badly. Uh, I, don't, I don't love it, though. It doesn't really fit my play style too much. Um, so I probably won't play it going forward, but I just decided to test it out this, uh, this tournament to see how it did. Um, as for the side deck, um, you can see I'm not playing any Spell Canceller. I wasn't really expecting to run to this deck or the Stein version, and I figured playing an extra Threatening Roar would be a little bit more versatile. Uh, you know, it's good against any OTK decks or, or Giant Trinity decks, uh, even like Rescue Cat or uh, Cat Burn, which uh, has been seeing some play recently, so I decided that Threatening War was a little bit more versatile. Um, I decided to play a Messenger of Peace because I was expecting some Warriors. Um, I went up to three Roll Decree against Back Row Heavy decks, and also Burn has been doing pretty well recently, so uh, I thought maybe three Decree would help out there. But uh, that's pretty much it for the side deck. Uh, let's get right into the replays. So... This first one is um, pretty drawn out. Uh, <laughs> the funny thing is we're both playing Reasoning Gate decks, but like uh, we both uh, didn't start off with very good hands, so the game is pretty drawn out here. Um, but I open with the Reckless Greed. You'll see that I don't activate it to like forever, basically. Uh, he's playing Reasoning Gate, but Watergate version. Um, I hit the Crane, get a nice draw off of that. Um, yeah, I'm just going to sit here till I get a Dark in the Grave, basically, which is coming up pretty soon after I use this Metamorphosis. Um, so I do that in the end phase. Um, let's see here. Yep. 
try to take his abyss soldier that's good um okay now i just am going in with the attacks uh you can see i'm trying not to use his reckless greed until i know i have game um which i pretty much have game pretty soon right here as soon as this dark hits the grave and as soon as i have some space on the field um i have game but you'll see i don't really get any space on the field so this scapegoat is kind of backfiring on me but um Let's see. Uh, I choose to use the Reckless Greed right here because this should be game. Um, but then he has the scapegoat, which I um, am going to have a little bit of a hard time dealing with right here. Um, and I also bounce back his Abyss Soldier so I can take the face down, which is probably going to be the Serpent. Uh, but I hit the Air Knight, which is nice right now because I can just get in for free damage and draws. And I've got a ton of advantage right now. Even though I can't draw off of Reckless Greed, I have everything I need to play. Um, so we're doing pretty well. Yeah, we're doing pretty well right here. And I have the Heavy Storm follow play, even though I can't draw. Uh, I'm going to use the Reasoning. Okay, that's a pretty nice hit. Um, why did I pass right there? I passed. Why did I pass? Um, let's pause it real quick. Why did I pass right there instead of using Heavy Storm? I figure... I think I'm just trying to get him to clear my field because uh, I can't really make a big push right now and I can heavy storm whatever I want. So, um, But I end up doing this now, trying to get in there for some damage. Um, okay, what is he going to hit? Okay, a piss soldier. Okay, he hits the Leviathan, which is nice. <laughs> that is a nice play. Um, so he blows up my whole field. Um, oh, also... Um, there was a weird glitch where you see that Abyss Soldier was just chilling there. Um, I was trying to bounce it back in his hand from before when I used True Nade, but for whatever reason, uh, Dueling Book was glitching and wouldn't let me, um, bump it back. But, uh, I ended up losing that game, <laughs> which is, uh, unfortunate for me since I had such a good, there's probably an, a number of opportunities where I could have just won right there, but I was playing pretty slow and scapegoat, um, kind of bogged me down. Um, but let's see what we got going on here. Ooh, a little bit laggy. Okay, so I opened up Last Warrior. I figured if he Snatch Seals this, I have Heavy Storm follow play. So he basically can't play the game right now. Um, I'm about to make some pretty crazy misplays. Um, okay, that's an insane back row. Okay, I was hoping at least one of these was a scapegoat or something. But, uh, they're all chainable, which is insane. <laughs> so... Uh, that sucks for me. I'm about to make a huge misplay again. This is like uh, 9 a.m. in the morning and I'm half asleep right now. So I'm just not even thinking straight. Um, but I don't know why. I thought I had a Dimension Fusion in my hand. <laughs> I guess I didn't. Um, but my plan was tribute this for Jinzo um, and just go for game right now with BLS and Dimension Fusion. But <laughs> I don't even have a Dimension Fusion in my hand. So I'm just tripping right now. Um, so I got rid of the last warrior for no reason. Like that was a good position to be in. Literally no reason to do that. Um, uh, maybe slightly good reasons. He, he just top decked a ring. So it's kind of favorable for me. And he has no apparent way to get over this Jinzo except he just topped like a stash seal. So, but, uh, yep. Straight up misplay. Um, just no other way around it. Um, luckily I got the scapegoat. So I was ready for the stash steal. Okay. He monster gates into the Sangin. Um, I Monster Gate into Air Knight, pretty good one. I think he's going to ring this, as he should. Yep, he rings this. Main Phase 2, um, Banish the Sangin. I feel okay because I have the Snatch Steel. If he takes it, or he already used Snatch Steel, actually. Um, and he just, uh, I missed defeat right there. All right, already I've made a couple of misplays. Um, but Game 3, um, I have the threatening roar and i have the out to the spell canceler like i'm i assume that if, it, if i'm playing against reasoning gate like they're gonna put in spell canceler if they have it in their side so i usually put in like a, a ring of destruction or compulse or mirror force or torrential stuff like that uh i think i put in torrential and compulse and ring or something um but i'm ready to get rid of this spell canceler um so i'm prepared um okay so i reasoning I hit eight. He called four. Reasonable call because I haven't milled anything yet, but got lucky with eight. Pretty sacky. Uh, tribute it for Jinzo. 
bring back okay this is like the fun part about playing this deck um so i tributed for jinzo and now i'm gonna demock loop him so i dimension fusion it back and then get it off the field again with metamorphosis and then bring it back again and that's already um 52 uh 7800 damage on board so i otk him like what was that turn two or turn three overall not don't feel too good about that one that was a pretty sacky win not gonna lie um first game had it in the bag i don't know what i was doing second game i uh, made that awful misplay with uh, the last warrior so um but i barely scraped by here um so that was the first first match all right moving on to the second match all right playing against randage randage um i think he's playing warriors or chaos chaos warriors looks like chaos to me Start off with um, Grace of Charity, really good opening. Got the Light in the Dark in the Grave. Um, scapegoat, ideal first turn opening. And, okay, this hand is absolutely bonkers. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have the True Nade, the Dimension Fusion, and the Chaos Monster with the setup. So it's really sacky, not gonna lie. It's just straight sacky. Um, but I'm gonna wait till he commits a little bit more to the board. Um... Let's see, I could have dropped BLS right there, banished that. Um, if he takes a BLS, that could have been problematic. I think I'm gonna wait till, uh, yeah, that wouldn't have been game, right? Like 3000, and I'd have to use it to banish this and get in there for um, 35 is what I was thinking. And I'm like, I don't think that's worth it i'm gonna wait a little bit more i could have gone aggressive uh looking back because i have two dimension fusions um i could have gone aggressive with this one if he gets rid of it then i have a light in the grave and then i just need a way to get a dark in the grave and i could summon chaos Rosser again but um i'm playing a little bit slow here um that's fine because i have these scapegoats to block things um, okay, now I've got the Heavy Storm and the True Nate and two Dimension Fusions, and he's got two monsters in attack position. Like, I feel pretty comfortable making a push here, which I think I do. Let's see. Oh, I don't even do that. Wow. Okay, so I'm just trying to, like, really guarantee this victory and, and fill up the grave uh, <laughs> even more. Um, why am I doing that? Like, why am I not just summoning this BLS, banishing that face down? wiping that back row don't really know what i'm doing here but <laughs> it's almost embarrassing to watch this to be honest um but do i finally go off here okay i finally start to go off here took me forever i guess i was waiting till the the victory was guaranteed um he's also got nine thousand life points because i used uh upstart but this isn't even going to be game right here don't really know what i'm doing guys but uh, I can clear his whole field, I guess. And if he gets rid of this, and I have another push with the, the Chaos Monster, True Nade, Dimension Fusion. So there's that. Um, I guess I'm just trying to play it safe, but I don't know. Playing suboptimally. All right. Okay. So, you know, I know he has a setup for Light, for Chaos. And I do remember thinking when I did this, like, I'm going to make this push. I'm pretty ahead. I have another push next turn. Um, I'm fully expecting him to drop a Chaos Monster on me during his turn to out my field. If it was BLS, he's going to attack into the Sork and the Jinzo, and then I could drop the BLS again next turn. I still have more than enough life points to Dimension Fusion. And if it's Chaos Sorcerer, then he has a pick between Sorcerer and Jinzo. So I think I was just trying to play conservative, and I didn't see a reason to go all in, but... I don't know, I probably could have won sooner. So he banishes the Jinzo, which is interesting to me. Um, ban banishing the Jinzo, I assume that means he has a trap that he wants to activate. So I thought this face down was a trap, but he was probably just trying to bluff me. But, um, you know, I got the game right. What am I doing? Wait, wait, what? actually, what am I doing? Um, oh, okay, I don't have a dark in the grave yet for BLS. Okay, never mind. We're chilling. Um... So I crashed that. I could have snatch stolen it, I suppose. Um, and then banished itself if I want to. But um, I'm in a really good spot right here. Like, he can't he can't OTK me. Or at least I don't think he can. And I have definitely game next turn. But 
I'm just playing really weird here, guys. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so he... Does he hit the good one? He hits the good one. Um, oh, okay. Okay, okay. So he hits a good one, and I'm getting punished for not playing more aggressively. Um, I, I summoned this to get the extra draw, and I know he won't have enough for game. Uh, but Dimension Fusion would be dead anyway. Um... So I reasoning, he calls eight, and what do I hit here? I hit a crane and draw into meta. And now at this point, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, all the monsters out of the deck, and I know only Demok is left, and he's got nothing to stop this. So I'm gonna hit the Demok, like guaranteed. Get Lightning Vortex, no, Heavy Storm, clear the back row, and then Snatch Steel. Um, yeah, guys, really just not good gameplay right there. I'm uh, not sure what I was doing, but it somehow worked out in the end, and I didn't get too punished for it. Okay, so he opens up Kaiku and Dust Shoot. Really nice opening against me. Um, puts back my only monster. Okay, dokey. Um... I go for the reasoning, he calls six. I get really sacky with the demock. I use reasoning again. He calls six again. I get lucky again. I'm just sacking right here. I'm just a sack lord. Um, put it in defense mode because I fully expect the back row to get rid of the demock and then the crane won't be able to get rid of the kaiku. So I'm fully expecting him to stop this demock attack and then I don't want him to banish. Uh, there's nothing to banish, but at least it's in defense mode. I can't take any damage there. Um, probably doesn't matter and also lets him run over this with other smaller monsters other than Kaiku, so that might not be the best play either, but yeah. I was also trying to play around Mirror Force as well, I believe, with the defense position, so, um, not the worst spot to be in right here. I think he's gonna, he's not gonna summon Suki on me, I guess, because he's afraid of Torrential, but, uh, gets rid of the Crane. We're, we're chillin', we're chillin'. Um, I think I'm gonna scapegoat end phase here, probably, yep. Scapegoat end phase. Uh, do I true nade meta next turn? True nade. Okay, he scapegoats. Um, and I meta. Okay. Get rid of one token. He has Sugiomi. Um, right here, I get a little freaky with it, and I uh, I think I torrential. I'm like, I don't want that Sugiomi being there. I have another scapegoat to follow up. I think I. Oh, I don't torrential. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I don't torrential. Um, I guess I sit on the scapegoat tokens a little bit longer and wait for him to do something else. Okay. So he does that. Okay. Flips the faith, gets upstart. That's fine with me. I saw he didn't really have any good spells in the grave, so I wasn't afraid. And now I get a nice torrential off. Okay. That's not bad. Don't mind about that one. Try to get in there with Chaos Sork. He's got ring. Okay, I have scapegoat follow play. We're chilling. Um, okay, so he's trying to set this faith instead of a Sir Priest. Okay. Um, doesn't really have two good spells in the grave, but I guess he has Snatch Steel coming up pretty close. Um, what am I doing here? Okay, so I Monster Gate for Jinzo. Get scapegoat back. Not too worried about that. Okay, I'm prepared for the Snatch Steel with a scapegoat. Do I have the BLS follow play? I do have the BLS follow play. Okay, so this is interesting. Um, he Dark Balters me. He tributes my Jinzo for Thunder Dragon. Metamorphosis into Dark Balter. Classic play. Um, you know, I'm going to prepare because I had the uh, BLS in my hand. But I do banish that. And I could Dimension Fusion right here. But I have a full field. Um, so I think I'm going to save the Dimension Fusion for the following turn. Um, but he clears my tokens, and now I'm going to try to drop this Dimension Fusion, which is massive, and he has no way to stop it. So, um, absolutely disgusting. I think if I'm smart... Oh my god, I'm I'm actually just dumb. Okay, yeah, I remember this misplay. <laughs> it's so... Oh god, it's so embarrassing rewatching this stuff. But, uh, yeah, if I was smart, I would grab Heavy Storm... Um, I'm pretty sure this is like I remember even when I was playing this, I mentally registered that this is probably a scapegoat. 
Um, or I know it's a scapegoat. What am I even doing, dude? Like, I know this is a scapegoat. He added it back with Magician of Faith. Um, I just wasn't thinking. I don't know. Sorry, guys. This is one of those ones where I just can't explain it. But uh, I remember shortly after I said Snatch, um, I was like, wait, I should grab back Heavy, right? Or Trunade or whatever's in here. But I had already said Snatched and I, you know, wanted to just, I'm like, okay, I'll just take the L. But um, I definitely, the right play right here is grab back Trunade activate it bait out the scapegoat and then pop his field with lightning vortex uh this is going to be another big misplay i grab snatch which does absolutely nothing and then as soon as i said snatch like i said i know that's going to be a scapegoat like i i knew that was there um so he's going to activate the scapegoat i attack with the demock first to get it in generally okay like this is the opposite of like edison format where you want to attack lowest to highest you want to attack highest to lowest um so that like if you attack lowest to highest they might take it first and then block the rest with scapegoat so you want to attack highest to lowest but i'm saving the bls attack so that i could attack twice with it or kill two scapegoat tokens with it so he has to activate scapegoat right now um that's one two three wait what am i doing here uh oh my god did i misplay again What? What? That's game, right, guys? What What happened right here? So he took... Oh, sorry. He took Jinzo. Okay, sorry. I'm tripping. He took Demok and Jinzo. So I have exactly four attacks left. One, two, three, and four with BLS. So he blocks all of them. Um, I have uh, quite a bit of life points. He does no prio. Um, let's see here. He should summon a Sura Priest, right? And attack the Cranes and... Get rid of most of my field here. Um, oh, I think there's like a glitch right now. I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, oh no, there's a glitch right now. So, okay, I see seven right here. That means that I, I activated reasoning. Um, I think it's glitching out. Yeah, definitely. Um, it definitely glitched out. Sorry, guys, right there. Um, so I think what happened is uh, he used BLS and summoned... No, I think he just forfeited. <laughs> I'm not really sure what happened right there. But maybe he crashed over... I think he like ran into my BLS. I don't know, but uh, alternatively he could have I don't know attacked both Demok and Jinzo and cleared my Sacred Cranes with a Sir Priest. But he has like no follow up play, so it doesn't matter. But I think I activated, I think I activated reasoning. That's why it says seven right here because he's guessing the number. But uh, he had no follow up play, so luckily I did not get punished for the the misplay with the uh, with the Demok getting back Snatch Steel. I grabbed it back because I was like expecting him to drop BLS on me, but the the Trinity was the better play by far. So that was match two, another match full of misplays uh, that I didn't get punished for. Um, I make even more misplays in this one, and I do end up getting punished for this for this uh, this time. Um, he's going first. He sets the DD Warrior Lady. Okay, I have no idea what he's playing right now. Um, he calls eight off the reasoning, uh, conservative reasoning call, or, I mean, depending on how you look at it, I guess. Um, I have another reasoning. He calls eight again. I get super lucky, and I think, yep, I hit both my reasonings, which is so good. Uh, get the air knight, try to get in there for piercing. I'm hoping that this is like a decoyji or something. Uh, it is a DD warrior lady, not the worst, because I got dim fusion. Um, but this is looking, looking pretty good. Um, really interesting, like, out of all the cards, like, Fusilier eats Exiled Forces so often. Like, in my opinion, they should kind of, like, save the Exiled Force for Jinza or something. Um, but I guess he has no Battle Traps to get over Fusilier, but it's really nice how often this eats Fusilier. But, uh, my hand is looking really good right now. Um, I get back Sinister, summon Summon Fusilier. What, what's going on here? Um, 
Oh, I added. Oh, sorry, I I miss I misclicked and added fusilier back instead of sinister. But um, I pre mat and then uh, bounce it back with true nade, and then monster gate it off for crane. Get a draw one. Normal summon Jinzo. Uh, bring back crane again. Um, I'm tired right now. I cheat and normal summon twice, but luckily he catches it. I already normal summon Jinzo like a second ago. Don't know what that was about. Um, get in there for four thousand. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty well set up for next turn. So he exiles the Jinzo, gets rid of the Kaiku, is smart and only banishes the Chaos Monsters, which can't be brought back with Dim Fusion. But, um, I have a good hand right here. Um, or, I mean, decent. Get a draw off of Air Knight. Summon Crane main phase 2. If he wants, he can crash into my Air Knight or my Crane. Um, summoning it so that maybe I can summon Demog next turn if I'm lucky. Um, okay, so he gets rid of... Oh, that was game? Um, oh, okay, sorry. That was interesting. I should have paused it. That was not game in terms of life points, but I had one card left in my deck, and he crashed <laughs> He crashed the DD War Lady into the Air Knight, so I draw my last card, and then I deck out next turn. So that's how he won that game. Um, so, yeah. That's a big rip. Um, put in the messenger. He hits it automatically with MST. He's got two Wangus in his hand. Okay. Um, reasoning. I hit the Fusilier. Feels really good. He's got a monster heavy hand. No traps. Just the way I like it. Um, so now I'm just going to run over his monsters. Um, I'm trying to wait till he sets a back row before I commit this decree. Because uh, I don't want to get blown up by Heavy, which he has in his hand. Uh, but he has no back row. So he hits the duo, uh, rips my pre-map. I have Sinister in the hand, which is nice. Uh, now I'm just clearing his monsters for free. And he's got no battle traps, so that's awesome. Um, I attack the old set because I'm assuming that... I'm, I'm thinking that this might be a DD Warrior Lady, so um, he hasn't flipped it or done anything with it. So I'm going to attack the new set, which could also be DD Warrior Lady, but yeah. Um, so now I'm just like clearing all his monsters for free and he's not getting bow traps. Um, I finally committed the decree to the board, which sucks because it was after I got a little patient here. And I put the decree down and put the serpent down to try to get the air knight out next turn. But both of them are dead now because I can't activate scapegoat, which sucks. Um, okay. Clears one monster. I still have this fusilier put in at work. Um, heavy storm. Uh, Lightning Vortex, get in there for 28, probably set the scape, oh, I set the scapegoat instead of the Torrential, I don't want to get rid of this Fusilier, it's got me in a good position, and I kind of also want to bait out uh, Exiled Forest or DD Warrior Lady, um, which is exactly what it does, Fusilier eats another Exiled Forest, now I'm in a really good position, I'm quite up on him, uh, he summons Wangu, I don't Serpent, um, I could always do it later I suppose, um, I'm not really too... Oh, wait, 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 hold on here. Um, okay, I can just keep... Okay, I don't do that because I can keep setting this Serpent over and over every turn. As long as he only has one monster, he can't attack me directly. If he commits a second monster to the board, then I can Torrential. So, I think that's the game plan here. Um, okay. Okay, so he commits a second monster, that's when I Torrential. That's a nice Torrential for my part. Um, now I'm in a position to just straight up win. Um, drawn to some nice cards. Uh, okay, yeah, and then we just got the nuts right here. So, I, okay, I, what's it called? I make a re Senshi just in case because I haven't seen Torrential or Mirror Force or any, you know, stable trap cards. So, I do that just in case. Um, and then he doesn't have enough life points to survive this attack if he solemns this. So, um, that game was all right. Not, too many misplays, I think. This one, I believe I make a pretty bad misplay. We're 1-1 one, one right now. I decked out the first one, which is unfortunate because I was in a pretty commanding position. Um, let's see what happens the second one. I have a good hand, too, which really sucks because I just really make an awful misplay. Um, okay. Hand's looking pretty good. Hand is looking pretty good. Opening is looking really good. Um... Okay, so I do this in the standby phase uh, specifically because 
I know he's on multiple Wongus, so I cannot afford him to normal summon in the main phase and not be able to activate Scapegoat, given that I have this Monster Gate in my hand. So I do that preemptively. Um, he just clears three tokens, sets three back row, and I just misplay right here. This is like, this is the misplay I was most upset at myself at. He sets three back row, and I'm like, oh shit, it's a lot of back row. But then I top the Heavy Storm. So like, it's like the perfect top. Like I should immediately rip this Heavy Storm. I should assume he has a Judgment, which I kind of did. Um, but for some reason, I activate this Monster Gate first. Um, I'm like, he has a Judgment, but you know, he's probably, I don't know what I'm thinking here. Like, it just did not click to me that if I, if he judgments this monster gate, my turn is over and I have no follow play and I'm probably going to lose. Uh, I don't have a light in the grave, uh, for these chaos plays and dimension fusion play. In my head, I kind of thought like, even if he judgments this, I'll just heavy storm the rest of the back row. He'll be down to 4,000. I could summon a chaos monster, dimension fusion back and go for a game and attack these monsters. But I didn't realize I didn't have a light in the grave and I just, uh, I just whiff right now. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I monster gate this and he properly solemn judgments it. Um, but if I had done it the other way around, he would have had to solemn judgment this heavy storm, putting him at 4,000. Um, and then I looked later. Yeah, and now I just lose. I looked later and my uh, the monster that I would have hit if I got the monster gate off was a uh, sacred crane, which I could have, you know, attacked over this. I would have gotten a draw, and I could have tacked over Don's Lug, and then, you know, when he gets rid of it, um, when he gets rid of it, then I could have, uh, you know, summoned the Chaos Monsters. Or even before that, I would have hit the Sacred Crane, drawn this monster reincarnation, could have pitched the BLS, then I would have summoned Chaos Sorcerer, then activate Dimension Fusion, bring back Dark uh, Demok and Sacred Crane, and then I can, you know, get something back to my hand. I could, uh, let's see what I, what would I have gotten back to my hand? Um, hmm. Maybe Swords of Revealing Light. I could have got Graceful Charity to dig a little bit deeper. I could have even uh, gotten Monster Gate. I could have used Chaos Sorcerer to, let's say, banish the Don's Lug and then Monster Gate into the next monster. And I would have had been able to clear his field. Um, he would have been already at 4,000 life points, but he had um, Ring of Destruction as well to get rid of something. But then he would have been down to 1,700 life points if he gets rid of this, and 1,200 if he gets rid of Demok. And then, um, yeah, I think that would have been game. If he's down to 1,200 after Demok, whatever I hit off of the uh, monster gate that I uh, tribute my Chaos Sorcerer for, um, would be enough to finish it, right? Because if I, 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 I'm either going to hit Jinzo, oh, I might hit uh, Air Knight instead, which would not have been a game. But either way, huge misplay by using the Heavy Storm second, I don't know, that was just um, stupid for me. So that was match three. I'm 2-1 at this point, it's double elimination. Uh, moving on to Moon Goblin. Uh, shout out to Moon Goblin. Really sorry. I sacked this one really hard. I just opened the nuts. Like, this hand, opening hand is actually insane. Um, and opened the Reckless Greed. Uh, you remember I used Reckless Greed the first game. It did not win me the game. Here, it, I mean, it was kind of neutral. Here, Reckless Greed, um, I don't think it won me the game necessarily, but it definitely helped me win the game, but I already opened up, like, insane, so it probably did not win the game, you know, by itself by any means. Uh, but I have the literally ideal start with the scapegoat first turn and double monster gate. I heavy storm in the back row, use reckless greed, and then just proceed to go off, like absolutely go off. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't feel good about this one. Like this one just feels hella sacky. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, yeah, I apologize to him for sacking. It was literally the perfect hand, like he said. So. Uh, okay, game two, opening hands looking pretty solid again. Uh, greed is always good. Oh my god, I'm sacking so hard. I'm just a sack lord. Yeah, I, I, I apologize for the sack again. Like, I'm just a sack lord right now. It's it's terrible. <laughs> um, not good Yu-Gi-Oh, but uh, I got a nice torrential off. Um, now I'm going to stall it with Messenger of Peace. Um, I'm going to activate this in the end phase. Uh, 
because I have metamorphosis. I'm thinking about whether to keep it or not. Um, I let's see here. Um, I think I kept it by activating this already, and now I'm just gonna take his thing, and then maybe I'll let it die next turn. But I do let it die next turn. And then what do I do here? I let it die next turn so I can start clearing his field. I summon Jinso so he can activate traps. Um, and if somehow he like Book of Moons this or gets rid of it somehow, I can follow it with the second Jinzo or with the with the Jinzo for a second attack. Um, and also he's playing warriors, right? So if this is a if oh yeah, I also thought about I thought about this. Like that was a little bit of a that was somewhat of a heads up play on my part. I was like, if I'm attacking a DD warrior later right now, it's gonna get banished, and then I can follow it with the Jinzo attack on the second monster. So that was that was kind of a heads up play on my part. Um, okay, smashing grounds. We're chilling right here. Um, I'm gonna go in hard right here. He judgments that, but I have the absolute nuts. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get that off the field, get a draw, and I have Dimension Fusion follow play, and now I'm just in a really good position. Smashing grounds this, um, but that's just game, right? Uh, I could just attack with that. If he gets rid of it, then I have the Dimension Fusion Fall Play. And uh, that was quick 2-0, but I really did just open up incredible. So uh, I don't feel too proud of that victory. And then finally, match 5, the last match. Um, I honestly forgot about this match. Let's see if I make any major mistakes here. Um, so I open up Serpent. This gate goes through. He doesn't have Judgment. Um, so that's good. Um, is this going to go through? Definitely not. Okay, Sakuretsu. My field is open. Okay, not looking good. Donzalug. Um, another Turbo Warrior deck playing Jar of Greeds and probably um, Upstart Goblin. Uh, interesting build for sure. Uh, but I'd rather like it because it means they're, that they're probably a little bit lighter on the battle traps and things like Dust Shoot. But... Uh, Let's see here. Okay, so I have to Lightning Vortex this, I think. Uh, I could have set the Scapegoat and let him commit one more monster, probably. But if that Scapegoat gets um, Dust Tornado in the end phase, then that would have been really bad for me. If I didn't preemptively Lightning Vortex that. So that's why I decided Lightning Vortex. Um, and now I'm just going to sit on this for a little bit. Uh, this is not looking good for me. Um, okay, he rips the Dimension Fusion on my hand with Don's Luke. Really not looking good for me. Maybe setting the Sinister Serpent was a misplay. Um, or rather, how did that Sinister Serpent get in the grave? However, it got in the grave and he, he kaikued it, so that, that kind of hurt, but I'm not sure if it would have made the difference, to be honest. Uh, open up pretty well. Do I have the Decree set? I have a Decree set. That's nice. Um... Sorry, a little bit laggy right now. Um, decree in the end phase. Reasoning for Air Knight. This is looking pretty good. I make a King Dragoon uh, just to get cheeky with it, get another 2400 damage. And without traps, uh, he's going to struggle to get rid of this King Dragoon. He only has two outs, uh, DD Warrior Lady, or one out? Oh, no, two outs, DD Warrior Lady and uh, Tribe Infecting Virus. So I feel pretty good making that with uh, having the decree up. But um, this should be game. Yep, that's game. So 1-1. One, one. Uh, so far, no major misplays uh, that I've seen. Let me know if I'm wrong here. Um, okay, this is playable, especially since I got that. Um, let's see here. I think I snatch steal this because I'm expecting him to have a Sakuretsu when I try to run this into it, which he didn't. Um, but... If he Sakuretsu's it, then um, that's kind of tricky. Yeah, I think I just wanted to take his monster. Oh, no, no. Okay. I wanted to take it and tribute for Demok is what I was trying to do. Or take it, attack with it, then tribute for Demok is what I probably would have done. Um, but he has Threatening Roar. That's a nice one. Um, okay. Once again, this is the third time that Fusilier got hit by Exile. Like, it's literally an Exiled Magnet. <laughs> Um, reasoning, I know it's going to go through because Demox in my hand, he's going to call 8. Um, brain control, okay, this goes through. I Demox, does he have the judgment? No judgment, sweet. What do I have in the grave? Um, nothing too crazy in the grave. I do have this BLS play. I don't have Dim Fusion in the grave, which sucks. 
Um, what do I get back? I get back pre-met. I attack. I haven't seen Mirror Force, which I'm afraid of, so I don't want to commit the pre-met. I want to save it, and I can also tribute after for Air Knight if I need to. And he already uses Exile to get rid of uh, my monster, so Demok is kind of safe. He obviously doesn't have any battle traps. Okay, so I target Crane. He, he MSTs it. I have the dimension. I have the BLS follow play, which is safe now that uh, Snatch Steel is out of the picture. Um, okay, so oh, he hits me with a big torrential. I have the follow up chaos play, and this is absolutely insane. Okay, oh, okay, this is probably the the only match that I didn't make some terrible misplays in, and. It happens to be the match that I get absolutely sacked, <laughs> which is just a cruel irony because in the other matches you saw, I got really lucky and I sacked them pretty hard despite making a lot of misplays. This one, I didn't really make too many misplays, but I get sacked so hard right here. It's 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 so stupid how badly I get sacked right here. Um, so he top decks a Graceful Charity. Look at this. He top decks Graceful Charity. He's got no lights and darks in the grave. But watch this, watch this. He draws into a light target, a dark target, and a normal summonal monster. Absolutely insane. So I have 4,500 life. This is 4,700 damage on board. This is, I mean, this is worse in my opinion than getting uh, sacked by the Trinity. Like that happens all the time where people draw into Graceful and Pot and, and Duo, but this is literally the most ideal, <laughs> ideal situation for him. Like, <laughs> he drew into light and dark target and another monster. Um, which, if he didn't draw a light and dark target, this BLS is dead. So he summons this, you know, runs over my monster. Great, doesn't do any damage. Next turn, I draw into Royal Decree. Great, I set this again and set Royal Decree. He draws into another monster, great, but I still have more than 2,000 life points. And bam, I activate Dimension Fusion for a huge Dimension Fusion next turn. Um, so yeah, I mean, but it's karma since I did my fair share of sacking earlier. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Um, once again, really suboptimal gameplay, quite embarrassing. But I did a little bit better than my last tournament run. Uh, I'm planning on sleeping a little bit earlier next time I play in one of these tournaments. But uh, I did a little bit better, and I'm going to keep playing this deck until I top with it. Um, if you haven't checked out Pui's channel, I'll link that in the description. Uh, a lot of really good content, and she gave me a lot of really good uh, and sound advice for how to play against warriors, um, which I played a lot of today, as you saw. Uh, basically, the idea is to side out the Chaos and Dimension Infusion package. Because when you're playing against Warriors, they got triple Kaiku, they have triple Solemn Judgment. You know, in order for you to do your combo, you need to have both of these pieces with a setup. You need to summon the Chaos Monster first, and then you need to Dimension Infusion. Even summoning the Chaos Monster in and of itself is going to be very hard, given their Kaikus. And then you're going to have to try to Dimension Infusion, which you're going to have to play through three Solemn Judgments. And that's even assuming that you have enough life at this point to even do this combo. So um, her strategy for dealing with warriors is to side these out and play a slower game with you know things like Swords of Revealing Light and Messenger of Peace and some other spiciness, which I'm not going to cover in this video, but I'll cover in another video. But um, you know I think that's really really sound advice, and um, yeah. Not kind of knocking myself for not thinking of that sooner, but um, you're really playing against yourself and losing to yourself by having this package in there and trying to play the normal game plan against Warriors because they're so good at putting pressure on the board really fast, making sure you don't have enough life points, making sure they have Solemn Judgments to stop your big pushes. So the, the game plan should probably be simplify the game state a little bit, bring out big monsters that you can run over their monsters with, shut off their back row with either True Nades or Decrees, and uh, just slowly gain advantage um, that way. So we'll see how that works out for the next tournament. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Please go easy on me in the comments. I know I made a ton of misplays. Um, but yeah, peace.